Hey everyone, the Inner Nerd here. Today I'm going to be making the Tammy and Matilda Mark II. I assemble all of the road wheels and align the sprue connection. This makes them easier to sand off without getting flat spots when you sand. It is a real joy to build. Everything fits perfectly. The only downside is there's no interior details other than the driver's seat, and from what I can research, there doesn't seem to be any aftermarket sets to buy either. I will be using the vinyl track option, so we'll leave the drive sprocket and idler wheel loose on the poly cap so the track can be rolled in after assembly. If you follow the instructions the side armour is fitted now. I use the mug guard as a jig to attach the side plate in the correct position. then removed to be fitted after the hull was complete to reduce the chance of misalignment. I noted the part numbers on the engine covers for reference to position them correctly. There was a mould seam on a lot of the smaller cylindrical parts. I removed them by scraping with a scalpel blade.
A few parts showed ejector pin marks, so I scraped them smooth with a scalpel blade too. There is a lack of any detail inside the turret too, although there is room for scratch build if you like. I just decided to add a false floor using plastic card so you don't see the bottom of the hull through the turret hatch. I could now put on the side armour and align into the hull. To replicate a ricocheted effect, I heated a metal skewer and pushed it into the armour. It's the first time I've used this technique, so getting a random grouping of bullets was a little tricky. I did manage to consider the angle of attack to achieve a realistic ricocheted effect. The Matilda was often a target for German artillery such as the Pac-40, so I used the opposite end of the skewer to create a larger indentation. Next I removed some material from the sharper edges of the hull, in areas of particular wear, like the rude crew members would take to access the turret and load ammo into the tank. I made a mistake with the first mix of middle stone and had to reprime. This gave me an opportunity to add some scratch built mud flaps to the front. I like to use the black basing technique and marvel the colour coats. I feel this gives me more control over the colour and texture of the finish.
Once the marble layer is complete, I thin my paint further and blend the colour together to create a subtle mottling effect. This technique works well on lighter colours such as middle stone and silver grey, but less effective on the darker colours such as the dark green as it is almost the same as the black shade base. On this model I thought it was a waste of time to clear coat the entire model until glossy enough for decals, so I concentrated on the areas that decals were going to be applied. Luckily I had Tamiya Mark Fit strong decal solution to get around this poorly placed ricochet effect. Maybe I should have thought about the placement on the decal before I went putting holes in it. The directions on Mark fit stronger to apply the decal solution both under and over the decal and leave, but I rolled out any air underneath the decal so it didn't silver and conform better. To create the wooden look on the tools I remove the oil layer applied over the base in a streaking action. This gives a wooden grain and so the bristles drag the oils.
wanted a really battered and chipped exhaust, I based the part in XF19 Sky Grey and applied AK Warn Effects over this and waited around 15 minutes for it to dry. After the Warn Effects had dried, I post shaded with a rusty orange red colour. The post shading layer will take no time at all to dry, so you can activate the worn effect straight away using clean water. To agitate the worn effects, I use a variety of stiff brushes and toothpicks to carefully chip away the rust colour. The effect is already looking quite nice and could be used as a final finish, but I wanted to take it a little further and add some chips by rocks and stones flicked up from the track. Added a rust coloured wash and selectively removed the white spirit on a cotton bud. This will make a base colour for the next effect. I mixed the chip metal colour from XF10 and XF69 to get a dark reddy brown colour and then flicked paint off a toothpick to get a random spattering of chips. Some of the spattering was concentrated so I joined them up using a brush to create pockets of heavier chipping. Still not satisfied, I decided to remove them using a toothpick to blend them in. I wanted to create flake metal where the fuel tank had chipped and been damaged by fuel spills, so I applied super glue around the area to get a bubble metal effect. This can be done in several layers to create an uneven and bumpy surface. I painted the fuel stains using rust and grimy oils and attached to the model.
I started weathering with chips using a slightly lighter shade of the base colour to replicate scratches and warm paint, concentrating more on the panel lines and raised detail. I use this technique for all three colours of the camouflage scheme. Next was to concentrate on the shell damage. I base these with a dark grey colour and use the same colour for the deeper chips that go all the way through to the metal. Where there was exposed metal around the ricochets and rivets, I used rust washes to create streaks. After being left to dry I subdued the effect using white spirit to soften the intensity.
Reference images showed that some areas of the tank were very discoloured, particularly where the crew had walked in to get into the driver's hatch and turret. I used AK Neutral Brown Wash to achieve this. Some images showed a lot of grime and dirt. This one's a bit too much for me, but I used it as guidance for adding some darker grime around the engine covers. The engine rack was often used as a storage deck when the tank was stationary. I added chips for using a sponge and the dark grey brown chipping colour I used for the exhaust. Final layer of AK dust pigment to the track and the model was complete. This is a fantastic kit and possibly the best I've come across. 
The fit is perfect and the details are accurate as far as I could tell. I would definitely recommend making this kit if you haven't already. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more military vehicles, check the playlist on the end screen and see what's in the box on the card above. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, why not take a look at some of my playlists by clicking the links on the screen, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.